Hey, Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thanks for joining. Today I'm going to show you how to build a vegetable or produce crate. Super easy to do using super cheap materials. All right, great aesthetic if you're into the farm thing, farm style. Uh, these are the same kind of crates that I used when I was a kid on the farm. We'd load them up with vegetables, toss them on the truck, and, and take them out. Uh, very easy to do. Now, if you're with me on my previous garden box, all right, garden box episode, you can check that out. You're 80% of the way there. Just check that out right here. Same kind of techniques. Basically, all we're going to do is glue and nail this together. Pretty easy. You can go to my website. All right, take my website down here. Take a look. 30minutewoodshop.com. You can get a set of drawings. The drawings are a little different than what I'm doing today. This uses milled lumber. The milled lumber uses slats that are one and three quarters inch wide. Five of them in each side and ends. In this case, we're using some lath, which is a little bit smaller. Take a little bit more. So, on to this. Parts. I already have cut. Didn't want to bother showing you how to cut these things. I think you know how. I have, for my side, I have four pieces that are 10 inches by one and one, one, and one quarter by one and one quarter. I have four pieces that are 12 and a half inches by one and one quarter by one and one quarter. I have my end lath, all right, my end strips, and these are 12 and a half inches long, quarter inch thick, and one and a quarter inch wide. That's the difference between this and the drawing. There's six each of these because these are one and a quarter instead of one and three quarters. You have to add an extra one. So for the, si <coughs> for the sides, same thing, I get six of them. These are 21 inches long, and they're uh, one and a quarter by a quarter inch thick. Same thing here for the other side, and then for the bottom, six more. So, now all I have to do is clean these things up. I'm using lath strip. Lath is super cheap, but it comes rough sawn. I want to get rid of some of the fur. This is going to be an inside project. As a matter of fact, check out uh, this one because this is my uh, farmhouse style bench, and I'm making this box, this crate, to go under the farmhouse bench specifically for boots and shoes. So, great way to use this thing. Let's get busy building. Okay, sanding is simple. All I want to do is knock off the fur and the splinters. So I'm using 220 grit, an orbital sander. Should only take about 10 to 15 minutes max to do all this stuff. I'm just hitting it easy on all four sides. So I'll do all the faces, flip them over, do the backs, flip them all, gang on edge, do the edges, and then I'm done. I'm not trying to take out the saw marks or the rustic look. I'm just trying to get rid of the splinters. So, keep watching. Okay, I'm going to be both gluing and kneeling these. I'm using a waterproof tight bond 3 glue and uh, two, in, two and a half inch 16 gauge nails through Vastus Nailer. You can find these links in the bottom if you're interested. And all I'm going to do is, uh, I'm using the, the waterproof glue because it's going under my bench where I expect I'm going to be throwing wet, dirty boots. So I want to keep it going that way. And really, the nails are, are a backup plan and also hold it in place so I don't have to keep it uh, clamped the whole time. So first thing I want to do is do a little glue down and then do some nailing. Make sure you don't glue star the joint and you put it together correctly. All right, this is always kind of dicey anytime you put your hand on top of the. I'm not going to do that. All right, so what happens if I put my hand there? There's a potential for the nail to deflect because of the grain or maybe how I'm holding it and potentially ran into my finger. Now, I've done that once or twice in the past. So two nails. Everything's still looking pretty good there. Like I said, be sure you put enough glue in it. You don't have glue start the joint.
So there we go. First one's done. And that is really perfect. Okay. Let's do the next one. And then we'll swap over to a different nailer with different size nails to put on the uh, slats. All right. Ready to start nailing slats. I've got an 18 gauge nailer here with three quarter inch uh, nails in it. Got my slats. So, first thing I want to do is I want to mark off about, in my case, this is a quarter inch. And all these are just two one eighth inch spacers that I have laying around as part of my shop tools. Do a quick Layout there. So just see how it's going to work. Now wherever I lay it on this one, it's going to lay out on this one the exact same, and then it's going to lay out all the rest of them on the sides. So pretty straightforward. I'm just going to kind of eyeball these here real quick. These are about three quarters of an inch. And at the bottom I want a quarter inch, so. So that's looking pretty good. I like the spacing. So a quarter top, quarter bottom, and then about three quarters, about three quarters between them. And it's actually, yep, three quarters. So, so that's what we need to do. Now all we do is pull them back up, glue them, and then nail them. So we know where this glue is going to go. Not putting a heck of a lot just enough to hold it in place. And actually, I'm going to run a little bit along here. Just because. That way, if something gets in here, it won't knock the center part of it loose. Now they cut these things all the same size. All right, it's perfect right there. And I'm going to throw two nails each, each side. Make sure I have these uh, looking good. And there we go, first one's in. Now it's a matter of setting the rest of these with some glue and nails. Important to set this one up right the first time because as I said, it sets up the rest of the rest of the lath, the strips you're going to put in, because those are so that's a setup. So make sure you get them in the right spot, get them square and even, and you should be good. Okay, there we have it. The ends are done. They'll set up like this, and we'll put in the uh, bottoms, and we'll put in the uh, sides. So, let's keep working at this. Okay, one side's stabilized. Now let's get the bottom stabilized. Now basically where this has got to go, a little glue. 
that in. Use my spacers. And you don't have to use spacers. You could actually just go ahead and measure and mark. Stabilize this edge. And next. Now all we have to do is finish it up by laying in all the rest of the all the rest of the lath. So keep watching and see it go together. All right, the bottom, I don't have anything to key off of, so I'm going to use these uh, three-quarter inch spacers. Throw it in. Give it a quick space. And I'm actually going to mark it. I know where my glue goes. Now I'm going to come from the other end and mark it. going to leave my uh, center where I can make my adjustments. And you can make all your adjustments on one side if that's really what you want to do. Well, I think this project turned out really well. Definitely a 30-minute project to 45 minutes, depending on how much sanding you do. 
a great, great farmhouse aesthetic, exactly the way I remember these when I was a kid, though I think this is a little bit better quality. I don't think the ones we had were quite, quite as nice. Uh, they were pretty beat up. But hey, great place for shoes, great place for toys, excellent for books. You can make a bunch of these, stack them up. Really cool. So, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this. In the bottom, there's links to my blog, which has a set of plans for these. They're a little bit different than how I made these, but it's going to look just as nice. Um, and you'll have an easy time putting together. Uh, there's also links to tools and things that I use, a couple things that I mentioned uh, earlier. So, if you need those, jump down there, take a look, see if it's something you can use. And, of course, there's some other links to some other uh, videos and things I've done that are similar to this, that are along the same farmhouse aesthetic. So take a look at those too. Hey, folks, on that note, again, hit like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this, and until next time, good making.